This is another story about karma. This is real, true street crimes, narrated by Eddie Jackson Jr. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And this is a story about Rodney Rice, Lamont Upshaw, Chris Cole, Mark Heath, Cop the Belly. These were fifth precinct officers on the east side of Detroit. Now, Rodney Rice, Lamont and them, they was all on the tape and they was about that money. Now, I refused to pay them for quite a while. In refusing to pay them, after I looked at refusing to pay them, what it cost me, they wanted $1,000 a week. Now, not paying them, I got busted by them, set up, not busted, just gave a case by them, which cost me, it was a two-lawyer system. It was Steve Sharp and Steve Fishman. If the case was small or read it out, Steve Sharp would be the one that I would always call to come rip me out. And after the case went to the point of it's going to be a big case, I would take Steve Fishman to represent me to finish up the case. So a lot of the cases that Steve Sharp and Steve Fishman represented me on was based on Rodney Rice, Lamont Upshaw, Chris Cook, Mark Heath, and Carter Belly. And they was a motherfucker. Now I realized after not paying them, I had to give Sharp four thousand a which was fifty. What, what, is it a question, my love? Yes, who are those people? Those are police officers. Mark Heath, Chris Cole, Rodney Rice, Lamont Upshaw, and Carter Valley was all Detroit police officers working for the 5th Precinct, and they was on the take. You know, and they wanted me to pay them $1,000 a week. I, at first, refused to pay them $1,000 a week. But in, not, in refusing to pay them $1,000 a week, I wound up spending $4,000 for Shark, going through the rig, go to the case. All right, the case go on now. Got to take Fishman. That was another $5,000. I went to going through this at a rapid race. They, they might have put three cases on me in a matter of six months. That was like, you're talking about almost $30,000 in legal fees right there. And that's in six months. And I had a three-year battle with them over this. You know, so eventually I decided it was cheaper to pay them. You understand? And things worked out after that. But I should have paid them much sooner, to be honest with you. So if you have that opportunity, you're probably better off to pay them when you're in that situation unless you want to just close that spot down and move, but French Road 3875 was making too much money. It was worth it to me to pay them $1,000 a week, which I should have did in the first place. But here's another story with it. My cousin Dennis Richardson egging me on. Oh, nigga, don't pay them motherfuckers. He comes out of jail. He get busted the very first day I put him back to work at the spot. Now, when he get busted, mind you, he has just got out of, he been out of jail three hours. He come back to the spot, he want to work that bad. He's working, and motherfucking Lamont Upshaw come right in there and pinch him. Take $1,000 cash, tell him, nigga, if you hadn't just got out of jail, I would be sending you to jail. Now, but nigga, I'm taking this grand and shut your motherfucking mouth. Now, he ain't had no problem with him taking $1,000 then, so it wasn't no sense to prolong paying that man. Giving them that motherfucker thousand dollars a week and be through with it. Now he just took a grand right there. Countless sacks I lost. You know, so I would have been better off to pay them from the beginning. You know, the fifth precinct, they was a motherfucker. And that was a war. It kept me in the newspaper with that. All of this is 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 I'm gonna find these newspaper articles so I can feature them to you. 3875 French Road was the most rated crack house in the city of Detroit. That year, it was unstoppable. Every time they would raid it, it would be back home because I had the entire block. So because you raid one house, that wasn't gonna stop the rest of the block. So that's how that show went. That's why I couldn't be stopped. 
It was way more than just 3875. You know, I had all the surrounding houses around there getting down. So that's the name of that tune on that story, you understand? It was a lot of people in helping me. Amy Cunningham, I remember one day I walked straight out the door at 3875. I said, I ain't gonna work here today because this house is too hot. Amy Cunningham is di directly, diagonally, directly across the street from French Road. Before I could get from French Road to her house, motherfucker Chris Cole and Mark Heath pulled fuck up and said, come here. I look at the motherfucker and say, who, me? Take off running. Now, you got to realize this. I had a quick 50 yards, and that's it. I could always hit 50 yards, get rid of the dope, and never get caught with the dope. But they was going to always catch me. We used to joke at the 5th Precinct when they bring me in that old big... Tenant up there, he said, you can't outrun nobody. I said, no, man, I can't outrun nobody. He understand, every time I ever ran, I got caught. I did not have no wheels. But I was fast enough just to get away and get rid of that motherfucking sack where I never got caught with a sack. But they always caught me. And every time they catch you, that's a 72-hour wait. So I got tired of waiting with that bullshit. I started ridding out with Steve Sharp, and that's what I mean. That's that the money just, it just started happening then. It was a three year battle with them. I knew Shark and Fishman better than I knew my wife, Kenyatta. I mean, truly, I knew them better than her. You understand? So, that is just another story. And let me finish it up like this just to show you how karma works. Rodney Rice, Chris Cole, Mark Heath. Lamont Upshaw and Chris Cartavelli wound up in federal court in front of Judge Avery Cohen, the same judge I stood before and my father stood before, the same judge that gave my father 60 years for a nonviolent crime. This is who sentenced Lamont and all of them. It's just a strange, ain't that a strange coincidence? Judge Avery Cohen is the same judge that sentenced all of them. That's a small world. They busy trying to put me in jail and they wound up beating Judge Avery Cohen before I did. All praises to our law. Please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Peace out and I'm coming back at you.